months ago. Hey guys, this is how to play Before You Accuse Me. Uh, I'm doing the Eric Clapton version here from his Unplugged album, MTV album. Um, really cool way into doing a 12 bar blues in E. This is the song that I would teach all my beginner students about a 12 bar blues. Um, by this we're talking about an old school blues uh, with a bit of a bounce to it, really slow. Not the uh, earlier kind of rock and roll stuff. Uh, 50s and 60s rock and roll that I've covered uh, earlier in my beginners course, kind of Johnny Be Good and things like that. It's a very different style. We're in the old kind of Bloody Waters style of blues here. And for this we're in the key of E. This is a great place to begin to understand uh, about the key of E and what that kind of entails. This 12 bar blues is a formula. Yes, it's 12 bars long and it tends to get used in blues music. However, it applies to all music, um, and it is a formula to give you all the obvious chords in a key. So, I'm a songwriter, I'm a guitarist, and all you can do when you go, right, I'm going to write a song now, is basically pick a chord. Um, I'm going to pick E in this instance. Once I pick that first chord, I've essentially made a choice that every other chord now has to work with this first E chord. Now, I could obey these rules, these obvious choices that I've got, or I could not. It could be absolutely any chord that there is, just all the chords that I know, in any order, and it might work. But that can maybe sound a little bit random, and if you're not aware how it's going to sound before you start, then that can be really tricky. So as I say, when we start on an E chord, the two chords that a 12 bar blues gives us in E are A, and a B7. Now to make it sound even more bluesy, we could turn all of these chords into sevenths, an E seventh and an A seventh, both of which would, would just miss out whichever finger is in the middle, so um, on a standard way of playing an E major, it would be your third finger, and on an E, uh, on an A seven, sorry, we'd just be missing out whichever finger is in the middle, so maybe it's your middle finger, Maybe it's your first finger if we're playing it a different way. But this is an absolutely brilliant way into this idea of keys and an intro introduction to this old school style of blues if you've not come across it before. Uh, if you want to check out the chord sequence, it's below in uh, the description. That will take you to a link on my website, which will show you all these chords uh, in the order I'm going to play them. And it shows you one bar of E major to start off with. And then we're going to go to A early. We're going to go to A after one bar. And then the final two bars of this first four bars are just E. So we have E once, straight to an A, and E, E. Otherwise known as an early four, because a lot of 12 bar blues songs just have the first four chords as exactly the same, to kind of solidify that that's the key of the song. And then the second um, line of this song, or the fifth bar, is an A for two bars, and then back to an E. And then finally, this last four bars of your 12 bar blues is where all the bells and whistles happen. This is where everything happens. This is called your turnaround, and here we go B7. I go for an A7 here definitely, but as I say, it is kind of up to... Um, up to yourself, you don't have to add a 7th every time, it just sounds a certain way when you do. E major for a bar, and then a B7. So in that last four bars, we've got B7, A7, E, and a B. But in those first eight bars, not a lot happened, we just went from E to A and kind of back again. Um, so that's a, that formula kind of acts like a ramp, like I've talked about your bridge before, where we want to build up the tension in a song, that's what this 12 bar blues in E does, it, it cycles through, 
builds up the tension all the way through and then starts off again. To ramp up that tension even more, we're going to add a groove to it. We're going to add a slightly palm muted E chord and we're just going to strum the thicker two or three strings in this pattern. A one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. That's our blues shuffle groove. Just staying on an E major chord to start off with. As I say, this is an absolute beginner's lesson. If you're wanting all the licks and tricks, I'm going to be doing those later. Um, but check out someone else. I'm looking after my, my beginner's course here, which this, this video is a part of. Um, so, palm muted E major chord. Thicker two, three, maybe even four strings. Uh, and we're just trying to get this sound. If you need a bit more help with this palm muting, I've got a video on my website which just shows you about this palm muting idea. It's called What is Palm Muting? So do a search from that on my site. Um, and it'll show you more about this. But every one bar, no matter which bar you're on, I want you to play one and two and three and four and. Now this is where we're, we're adding swing to it. This is to a different kind of grid to any of the songs we've gone for before actually. It's a, a swing grid or a triplet grid where we're going one and two and three and four. So the middle and, rather than being one and two and three and four, which is known as straight, we're doing it with a bit of swing which means one and two and three and four and. And the easiest way to go about it is just copy as you hear it and, and copy Basically, listen and repeat. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. If you haven't listened to the original or check out the original somewhere on YouTube, I'm sure you can hear that that kind of bounce to it. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, it's to a count of one and two and three and four, and that's your bar. So let's have a play through together. If the bounce kind of idea is very new to you, uh, you can always I'd still palm mute it. But I would just play just on the beat. So one and two and three and four. Just on the beat. Two, three, four. And follow that 12 bar blues chord sequence which is on my website. So definitely check that out if you're not over there now. This video will be embedded over there so that you can find it. And uh, play along to me from your E major in a one and two and three and four. One and two and three, straight to A. One and two and three, back to E. One, two and three and four and one and two and three, two and A. sound I'm getting. To A, before you accuse me. Take a look back to E. Two and three and four and one and two, three, seven, coming up. And an A, E, B, seven, end on an E. Hold it there for one moment. So hopefully you can hear that over that cycle of 12 bars, which just repeats for the whole song in Before You Accuse Me, it's why I use it as a beginner's example of this idea. It's just one ramp, it's just one long build of tension until it resolves after the kind of big B7 at the end and it starts again, ramping up that, that tension. To emphasize that, what we can do over those last four bars from the first B7 that we play is not palm mute as much here. Let some ring out. Maybe not palm mute at all. And on that last B7, make sure that that's kind of the loudest we play. And then when we go back to the top on your E major chords, nice and quiet again, really heavily palm muted. So there wants to be one long dynamic shift or build 
from the start, the first E that you're playing, to that end B7 that just kind of gets louder and louder. Now practically, when you do this in a song, when you first start the song, that whole dynamics that you play are probably going to be quiet. And dynamics is just how loud or quiet you play. So at the start of a song, you probably want to just kind of lure people in and play the whole thing, even though you're going bigger at the end of your 12 bar blues, before it repeats again, you just want to keep everything on a bit of, give yourself somewhere to go, you know, don't get over kind of halfway. Don't go, right, I'm on my first round of a B7 and I need to play my first B7 as quick, as loud as I can. Because that, that doesn't sound kind of pleasant and it, it doesn't leave you anywhere to go. Maybe when you know you're on the last round of your 12 bar blues and you've got no more to play, then ramp it up. Or maybe you could ramp it up every now and after like a minute, you've got to as loud as you're going to get and then you drop it right, back right down. And that judgment of when you go loud and when you go quiet is imperative to all music, but is best learned, I think, first of all, in, in the blues, because you get an awful lot of people jamming in blues, and it doesn't really matter whether you go for one song or another song, they all do a, a similar, they have similar content in them that's very easy to spot. Um, there's lots of other 12-bar blues songs that are in this exact same fashion, um, for example, Sweet Home Chicago is exactly the same uh, as this song, most versions of it, in the key of E, so it's exactly the same chords. The Wanderer, um, particularly the status quo version, actually, is in the same key as this, and with these chords you can play along to the Wanderer absolutely no problem. And there are literally hundreds and thousands, probably, of 12-bar blues songs that use this same kind of pattern, but maybe other ones tweak it slightly, so I definitely... Before you accuse me, I have chosen because it's slightly slower and it is an acoustic version of this that you can play along to with the Eric Clapton version. Um, from there, once you've got that chord sequence and you're kind of thinking, okay, I'm cycling this, I'm cycling this. I've really got this B7 down, Andy. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's coming a bit too repetitive for you, a bit, a bit, you know, a bit boring to play. Maybe a lot of people think before they get into this world of, of blues guitar, the blues is a little boring, it's all the same. Well, that same formula allows you to know what's going to happen in a song. And it gives you the choice to artistically add something a little extra or hold back. Actually, do the whole less is more kind of idea. Um, and what we do in, in kind of blues music is we use substitutions. We substitute an E major chord for maybe a riff, maybe uh, a slightly different chord, maybe a seventh chord, but it's still based on that same formula. And there's just a couple of little tricks that I'd, I'd like to, to use here um, before I, I, I kind of leave, leave this lesson. Just as I'm, I'm going to be covering some of these in a, a later lesson mu in much more detail. Um, for example, probably the most common blues thing that you're going to be doing um, is, is this idea. So once we start palm muting it, we probably want to swap it for this riff, or this one, or a host of, of other kind of variations of that Chuck Berry status quo type riff, I guess. And I'm going to be covering that in a later video. I'm going to be covering that with Sweet Home Chicago. I'm going to give that all a video on its own. Even with just though, these basic open chords, when you choose to go to a seventh chord, or variations of your E chord are really big. Um, for example, one variation could be just choosing this seventh, or uh, this seventh, with your little finger at the third fret of the B string, can really bring it to life if you choose to pick those ones. So just staying for open chords here, I'm going to be picking as we were doing before, but then just pull out and as long as when I choose to, to hit those other other strings is on that grid of that, that, that bounce, one and two and three and four, it doesn't even matter when you do it, you could go one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. It, 
doesn't strictly matter. Um, but a, a good one and is is generally a nice rule of thumb. So one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. And one Tends to work for most songs and it certainly works in this situation here. So if you want to have a go with that one, it's, it's really cool. Um, to a similar um, degree, this riff gets used a lot in uh, Before You Accuse Me in particular. And that's a combination of um, two things. One is an E sus4, which if we take off your first finger and add your little finger directly underneath your third finger, that adds makes creates an E sus4, if you've not come across it before. Um, I'll be doing videos later on what sus4s are and why they're useful, but this is the blues um, application of it. And then actually an E minor first of all, but we're going to very pretty quickly hammer on your first finger. So we get E sus4, E minor, hammer on your first finger, and that move gets used an awful lot in blues, classic rock, an awful lot of genres of song. Um, and used in, in that way, with that combination, sus4 first, E minor, hammer on to make it a major chord again. Um, use it in that specific order and you can pretty much use it in any blues or rock situation. If you change the order, if you start off a minor and then go for what's this for that there, it doesn't, that doesn't really happen in blues and, and rock. Um, keep it, sus4 first, minor, major. And um, if after that major, because it's a hammer on, we hit the top few strings rather than the thicker ones, that creates this riff. taxing on your hand. I've got big massive lines on my fingers from doing that just now and I play guitar absolutely every day. Um, but it is a cool thing to um, get used to. And in this song we are on E more than any other chord. So in this lesson I'm just giving you something um, to play over that E really. Um, and from there there's, there's all sorts of things we can add over a 12 bar blues but in this first lesson that's all I want to cover. And I want you to play over me. I'm going to go for about maybe five rounds of this 12 bar blues now. I'll sing the lyrics a little bit as well. Um, but I want you to play along to me and apply these riffs to me first of all and then apply it to the Eric, Eric Clapton version so that you're really acquiring these, these fundamental skills. If you'd like to, you know, totally new to this and you just want to keep it to your basic chords, even if you, you know, haven't quite got the hang of this palm mute and it's still not sounding quite right, you need a bit more practice on it, just play along to me first of all and see if you can pick up any little details that I might be doing or just make sure that your timing's pretty spot on that you get in this groove with me now. So as I say, about five rounds of it and, and then we'll stop. Okay? In, from your E major, in one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and A. Back to E. That's when I first used that riff and A. Back to an E and I can use that riff again, that little lick. There it is, B7. A little louder. But not massively louder. Just letting them ring out a little bit more. B7. I'm back to quiet again. Boy, cues me. Take a look at yourself. The riff again. A. 
Fantastic. So that's a, uh, hopefully a pretty easy beginner's lesson, an introduction to the old school 12 bar blues in the key of me. And uh, hopefully that's been a bit of education for you on, uh, on the blues. Um, got plenty more blues lessons coming if you want to follow up these licks. So check out my website if you'd like more of those. I'm going to be doing a whole lead guitar course on how to play over these basic uh, 12 bar blues chord sequences and basic rock sequences, putting little licks together and making it really make sense to you hopefully and trying to build it the authentic way. Uh, please subscribe if you like these lessons, uh, check out the website andyguitar.co.uk uh, for lots of free video guitar lessons, a full beginner's course and loads more blues lessons as well. I'm sure I'll see you again.